Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today I'm gonna to talk about DLL search order hijacking. And I'm gonna use a, an example from WhatsApp uh, to demonstrate how potentially it could be misused uh, in, in the context of malware persistence. So basically, if malware is super clever, um, it could potentially use um, a victim's machine which has WhatsApp, in, WhatsApp installed in order to remain persistent and execute every time the user tries to execute WhatsApp as well. Uh, but first off, I'm going to talk about what DLL search order hijacking is, and then we'll have some fun with WhatsApp uh, and see where we can uh, we can go with it. So DLL search order, what does it mean? Well, basically, if you're writing an application in Windows, um, and if, if you reference uh, an external library, which undoubtedly and invariably you will, um, the chances are that you need to load that library from a particular lo location. Um, a lot of DLLs, as you'll know, um, exist in the Windows System 32 folder uh, and other folders um, for, for various different applications, but um, most commonly the, the, the Microsoft API calls and stuff like that you'll need are from DLLs that you'll find in the System 32 folder. So if you load a, a, um, a DLL, um, you should realistically give it the fully qualified path of where you're loading that DLL from uh, into, into your program uh, when you're writing it. Uh, but developers can be a little bit lazy, uh, and so they can just give the, the name of the DLL that they're trying to load. Uh, and in doing so, Windows has a default search order. So if you don't give it a fully qualified path of, of where the DLL exists, uh, Windows is smart enough to, to have a route to go and try and find it for you. Uh, and the root, uh, they have this uh, search order, which is considered safe in Windows uh, because they have this, uh, they, they recognize that this is a potential um, issue, DLL search order hijacking. Uh, and so Windows by default from probably Windows 7 onwards um, has this safe DLL search mode enabled by default. And this is the kind of search order it goes through. So it will start looking for the DLL, which you kind of lazily reference in your code uh, from the directory, which the application loads. Um, if it can't find it in there, it goes to System32, because most commonly that's where it's going to be. Uh, then it tries the system folder, then it tries Windows, then it tries the current working directory. And if it still can't find it there, uh, it will try all of the directories that are listed in your path environment variable as well. Um, so interestingly enough, um, a point to note as well, I've seen also binaries that try and load DLLs that don't even exist anywhere on the system. So they don't even, so they don't exist. Um, they just give, you know, a random name of a, of a DLL doesn't exist anywhere within the search order. And I don't really know why. It's probably something to do with legacy code maybe, but it's just a point to note if you, if you do start kind of uncovering that yourself, don't be, don't be surprised by it. Um, but interestingly enough, there's, um, I was looking at WhatsApp uh, and it tries to reference uh, quite a number of DLLs quite lazily um, and therefore it traverses this particular safe search order. So uh, it tries to load a DLL um, and it looks at first in the directory from, with the, from which the, the application loads. So if we're, if we're using WhatsApp for Windows, which is what I'm talking about here, uh, it starts to look in the application folder for, for WhatsApp. And that just so happens to be a user writable location, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, so that can be quite dangerous. Um, so just consider this is the attack scenario we're going to look at. The victim has got WhatsApp, WhatsApp installed uh, on their Windows machine. They receive a phishing email with a malicious attachment or they click a link in the, um, in the email which, which downloads some file or whatever. But basically the user is tricked into running some, some kind of malicious code. And I've, I've produced a, a, I've made a, a, a proof of a concept for this demonstration as well, which I'll show you. Um, and that malicious code is designed to drop a DLL into that vulnerable WhatsApp application directory because it's, as it happens to be in this particular instance, a user writable location. And what that means is every time WhatsApp is executed, it's gonna uh, look for this particular DLL, but it's probably meant to be in system 32, but because it's been lazily referenced, it starts to go through that search order instead. So it will start here. It will start to look, Windows will look in the directory from which the application loads, i.e. the application folder. Um, and if uh, the malware is able to write into that, into that application folder, which it is in this particular case, it's just gonna load that attacker's DLL. So it's quite a simple attack. Uh, and one, one that can be quite powerful. And you would think WhatsApp is obviously a very well-developed application used by uh, mostly millions of people around the world. Uh, but actually, there's no shortage of, of potential targets here. And I'll show you this live in just a second, but this is a little screenshot of, of Procmon. Uh, but there's a whole list here of DLLs that you can choose from that it tries to lazily load. Uh, and therefore, it tries to reference these DLLs from, from its, uh, um, the application folder. And that application folder is user-writable. Just before we get into it, 
you might be thinking to yourself, why haven't I told WhatsApp about this? Well, I did do uh, because I'm responsible, obviously. Um, and of course, I wanted a bounty, but they didn't give me one. This is exactly what they uh, came back to me with. So as, it, as uh, I mentioned to them, uh, I said, this is a post exploitation attack, right? A post installation exploitation. So it requires WhatsApp to already be installed on the system. And it requires the user to download some malicious file. So to be tricked in some kind of way. But because of that, because it's a social engineering attack, uh, if you like, against a Facebook user, i.e. a WhatsApp user, they're not interested. So they appreciate it, but it doesn't qualify for any kind of uh, remediation or in this case, bounty. So just bear that in mind. So I did tell them about it. So I'm not being uh, you know, silly and just disclosing something which uh, they, should, they should fix. But I think they should fix this. And maybe this is half of the reason for maybe making the video, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, so let's flip over to my VM here. So I've got a couple of files on my desktop here. The first one is this uh, calc.dll. If I just uh, run reg server 32 and on the calc, all it does is just pop calc. And this will be our proof of concept. Um, I, I compiled this uh, DLL from M M MSF Venom, uh, which is pretty easy to do. So I'll, um, if you're interested, I'll, I'll publish a link in the description of, uh, of potentially how to do that for you guys as well. Um, but simple, super simple DLL, doesn't really do anything, just pops calc. Um, also, I've got WhatsApp installed on this uh, on this machine, as you can see here. So here's the setup file which I ran, and I've got I've now got a shortcut on my desktop as as a result of that setup, which just uh, executes WhatsApp, as you can imagine. And what you find is that it installs it into the app data local folder of, uh, slash WhatsApp slash um, here. You have this uh, app folder with a particular version number, and if you go in here, you can see that there are a load of DLLs uh, which are obviously used by the application. Uh, but if you wanted. Oh, just a point of note as well, let me go back one uh, and just to kind of uh, highlight the point, if you have a look in the security settings here, you can see that the user has you know full access rights here. So read, write, execute, uh, et cetera, uh, of this particular folder. So this is a, a user writable location. If we go into process monitor, uh, have a look at some filters here. I've, uh, I'm filtering for where the process name is WhatsApp, where it's trying to read a file uh, or load an image uh, and where it's not found. Uh, and I'm looking at these particular types. So uh, executable file types, basically DLLs, OCXs, DRV, EXE, etc. Uh, and then just a few filters to, to, uh, to take away from some noise. This is actually some standard filtering I have. It's irrelevant because we're, we're going to filter where the process name is WhatsApp. Um, so if I just get set that loose, control and E and set that loose, uh, and then run WhatsApp, what we'll see is it tries to load an awful lot of DLLs uh, and, uh, and other bits of executable content. Let me just maximize it a little bit. My machine has started to run slow now because WhatsApp seems to consume so many resources. But if we scroll down a little bit, we can see here all of these entries for DLLs that it's trying to load, bcrypt, winmm, um, OLEACC, et cetera, all where it says name not found. What that means is it's trying to look for that DLL and you can see the first place it's looked for it is in this application folder, which is um, the, the app uh, folder from where the binary is, is executing. Uh, so let me just uh, try and close WhatsApp because it, it does not kill my resources. Close window. Um, there we go. So if we can write to that location, which we know we can because we have the permissions, uh, and if we can write a malicious DLL into there that's called one of these, and in, in this particular example, I'm going to call it crypt-based or DLL, uh, that means that the, uh, the WhatsApp binary is going to load my DLL before it finds the genuine one in system 32 or wherever else it, it exists in the uh, in the search order. So let me uh, let me go out of this and stop it. I wrote a little proof of concept. I thought, how is this going to be possible? How can I demonstrate this in a real world attack? Well, people open malicious doc files all the time. Um, you know, they download stuff off the internet, whatever. So I wrote a little doc file, which has got some macros in it, and I wrote them. Semi stealthily. Um, so if you have a look in the in the macro code here, I could have been a lot more stealthily. Don't get me wrong. I have some DLL bytes, uh, and that's stored in the uh, built-in document properties uh, called comments. Let me show you that. This is a common technique that, that malware authors use. If you have a look in the properties of the file and in the comments, there's a bunch of code, and it's kind of stashed away. Let me stick it in CyberChef just, and we'll clear it up a little bit. Um, so from base64, which is what I did, I base64 encoded this this massive big string, and you can already see here 45. 5A, 90, blah, blah, blah. So we, we've already got like executable content here. Uh, and it's just, as you can see, it's split with uh, with pipes. Let me uh, change it to uh, spa Oops, space. There we go. Um, and then say from hex. So you can see here, like, you know, the, the usual MZ header cannot be run in DOS mode, blah, blah, blah. And if you, if you scroll down, 
a few API calls, calc.exe, and that's pretty much all it does. Because that, that's the, the calc.dll, which I've stuffed away here uh, as base64 encoded content, which is just kind of concatenated by, by pipes. Uh, so not, not too stealthy, but not too stealthy, but kind of hidden away just a little bit. Um, so all I do is I just uh, base64 decode it and I split it based on the um, based on the pipes there just to get the, the, the bytes. Uh, and then I open uh, the, the vulnerable folder location. And in, in this particular case, again, I just base64 encoded it just for a laugh. Uh, and then I open that folder uh, or open that file rather and then write to it those, those hexadecimal bytes and then I close it. Uh, and I just call it uh, in, in this, uh, if you base64 decode this as we will here, let me see. Um, do, 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 do. Get rid of this, get rid of this. There you go. So that's the, the base64 encoding. So I'm just going to call it cryptbase.dll. Um, so let me come out of that and Let's exit this and we'll open the folder up just so we can kind of monitor if we're being written here. So we'll have, we should, the, the DLL should pop up here as we, as we open the documents. So let me just put the document on my screen here, enable macros as all users do. And then hopefully see we get cryptbase.dll that, that fires. So that's the malware now embedded. The malware is not executed on the machine because it relies on WhatsApp to be uh, executed. So we just come out of that. So that means that if I now load WhatsApp, calc fires, because it's loaded my malicious DLL in the background. Uh, and therefore, that's like a persistence mechanism. Every time the user tries to load WhatsApp, my malware is gonna fire in the background. Now, in this particular instance, it doesn't do anything malicious, obviously, because it's calc, but it just show, shows you the, uh, the potential uh, of what could happen because the application doesn't have any permissions around the folder where it looks for DLLs, but also it kind of lazily loads those DLLs from, rather than given uh, the fully qualified path of System32, uh, it kind of relies on the Windows default search order. And that's not always a good thing, especially if uh, that location is a user writable location. So uh, out of interest, I did uh, submit to VirusTotal that particular Word doc file. Uh, it got some reasonable detection, 15 out of 59, but you know, I expect that to probably grow. But you know, Microsoft, McAfee's of the world, Malwarebytes, et cetera, saw that as clean. Probably because it's cal it just pops cow, so it's nothing too malicious. But I thought just out of interest, I'll run it through the scanners just to see you know, the potential uh, of how you know, real world that potential phishing attack could be. And it just shows you that, uh, that there is potential there. Let's just talk about uh, a little bit about remediation. Um, really what you should do wherever possible, specify that fully qualified path. Uh, when you use a call to load library, load library X, create process or shell execute. Uh, and also there's a, there's a tool uh, that you can test your application against from Microsoft called CWD, CWD illegal in DLL search, which is the current working directory in illegal in DLL search. So that just makes that illegal in the search order path. Uh, and therefore, it's, it's something else that you can try and protect yourself against from, from uh, lazily loading DLLs. Uh, and there's loads more tips as well. So there's a link here, which I'll share in the description of the video uh, from Microsoft and also from binaryplanting.com as well, which has uh, got some guidelines for developers. A little bit out of date, but uh, all still relevant in terms, of, um, in terms of best practice for how to write code as well. So anyway, I hope that was interesting to you. I, I certainly have some fun with it. Um, and uh, hopefully you never know one day WhatsApp might fix it. But if not, um, maybe malware guys will probably use it for persistence. Who knows? Anyway, thanks, guys. See you soon.